There were more dances, and there were for fights, and more dances, and there were cake, and there was a great piece of cold roast, and there was a great piece of cold boiled, and there was mince pies and plenty of beer. But the great effect of the evening came after the roast and boiled when the fiddler struck up Sir Roger de Cavalier. Then old Fessiwick stood out to dance with Mrs. Fessiwick, a couple too, with good stiff piece of work cut out for them, three or four and twenty pair of partners, people who were not to be trifled with, people who could dance and who had no notion of walking. But if there had been twice as many, four times, old Fessiwick would still have been a match for them, and so would Mrs. Fessiwick. As to her, she was worthy to be his partner in every sense of the term. A positive light appeared to issue from Fessiwick's calves. They shone in every part of the dance. You couldn't have predicted at any given time what would become of them next. And when old Fessiwick and Mrs. Fessiwick had gone all through the dance, advance and retire, turn your partner, bow and curtsy, Corkscrew through the needle and back again to your place. Fessy be cut. He cut so deftly that he appeared to be winked with his legs. When the clock struck eleven, this domestic board woke up. Mr. and Mrs. Fessywick took their stations, one on either side of the door, and shaking hands with every person individually as he or she were not. Wishing him or her a Merry Christmas. When everybody had retired but the two apprentices, they did the same to them. And thus the cheerful voices died away, and the lads were left to the beds, which were under a counter in the back shop. A small matter, said the ghost, to make the silly folks so full of gratitude. He had spent but a few pounds of your mortal money, three or four perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves this price? It isn't that, said Scrooge, heated by the remark and speaking unconsciously like his former but not his latter self. It isn't that spirit. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service light, to make our service light or burdensome. A pleasure or a toll. Say that his power lies in words and looks, in things so slight and insignificant that it is impossible to add and count them all up. What then? The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. <laughs>